On April 14, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln and his wife, Mary Todd, decided to take a carriage ride. The last few years had been hard on them, to say the least. Not only had Lincoln been consumed by the Civil War, which was finally dragging to an end after four bloody years of fighting and the deaths of some 600,000 American soldiers, but the Lincolns were still reeling from a personal tragedy as well. In the thick of the war, back in February 1862, they had lost their 11-year-old son, Willie, to about what was probably typhoid fever. During the carriage ride, Mary remarked on her husband's great cheerfulness. The president replied, quote, And well may I feel so, Mary. I consider this day the war has come to a close. We must both be more cheerful in the future. Between the war and the loss of our darling Willie, we have both been very miserable, unquote. With the war finally ending, it seemed that they would be able to turn over a new leaf starting that night with a trip to Ford's Theater to see the play Our American Cousin. Of course, things didn't go as planned. That evening, while watching the play alongside his wife, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. But that's not the only thing that happened on that bloody spring night in the nation's capital. The Lincoln assassination was about much more than one man. In fact, it was designed as a three-pronged attack meant to take down the entire Union government. At around the same time that John Wilkes Booth snuck into Ford's theater armed with a pistol, two of his co-conspirators were on murderous missions of their own. Near Lafayette Square, Confederate soldier Lewis Powell knocked on the door of Secretary of State William H. Seward, armed with a knife. Nearby, German immigrant George Atzerodt sat at the Kirkwood Hotel with his knife and gun, trying to summon the courage to attack the vice president, Andrew Johnson, who was alone upstairs in his room. The violence that gripped Washington, D.C. that night would extend far beyond Ford's theater and would reverberate far beyond April 1865. This is the true story of the Lincoln assassination conspiracy from its often forgotten victims to its impact on American history for decades to come. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraga. And I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Austin Harvey. Today, we're digging into the Lincoln assassination and the larger conspiracy surrounding it. So week two of a presidential... Presidential assassination content. Yeah. Well, everything about the Lincoln assassination obviously like starts with the assassin. So that's John Wilkes Booth. He's an actor. He has these, he's from an acting family. He has these dreams of, you know, fame and everything. And he really hates Lincoln. He's a Confederate supporter during the war. And he just has like just deep hatred for Lincoln. But his first plan as the war is kind of drawing to a close in 1864 and 1865 is to kidnap Lincoln, not kill him. So in pursuit of that, he kind of brings together these conspirators that include George Atzerodt, David Harold and Lewis Powell, names that will come up later. What was their plan then? They were just going to kidnap him and then... Bring him to the Confederacy and use him mm. as like ransom, basically. But it didn't work. Yeah, right, right. The plan was supposed to take place in March 1864. They thought he was going to be somewhere and he didn't show up. So after that, the plan was abandoned. Yeah, they really, uh, yeah, they gave up quick. They were like, oh, crap, he didn't show up. Well, I guess we're done with that plan. They were done with that plan. And then things started happening really quickly. So this was March 20th. That was their original date of the kidnapping plan, mm -hmm. March 20th, 1865. Just a little while later, on April 2nd, Richmond, Virginia, the capital of the Confederacy, is cap captured by the Union, and the Confederate leaders flee. About a week after that, Robert E. Lee surrenders to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox, Virginia. And that's this is like marking kind of like the Civil War is basically ending in these like big steps. Right. But will, what really kind of convinces Booth that Lincoln has to die is Booth goes to listen to his final speech in which Lincoln kind of like suggests that he would support a limited version of black suffrage. And Booth says, this means, he says, N-word citizenship. Now, <laughs> by God, I'll put him through. This is the last speech he will ever make. Wow. But Booth doesn't really have a plan until April 14th. And then he goes to Ford's Theater to pick up his mail because he's an actor and he like travels. His mail is being sent to Ford's Theater and he knew the owner. And the owner was like, Lincoln's going to be here tonight. And then Booth 
started thinking, oh, I'm going to like, this is the perfect opportunity to kill him. Uh, yeah. Lincoln, it was also like advertised all around the city. And they also said that Ulysses S. Grant would also be there. So this could, it seemed like a just a great opportunity to take them yeah, both out. Right. Imagine that's, I mean, you know, Booth's got to be a racist because he was a Confederate supporter. Uh -huh. But like, wow, I've never heard that quote before. Mm. That yeah. Is, yeah, that's right. uh, That's bad. Booth's not a not a good guy. No. Though he thinks he is. He thinks he's the hero in this story. That's crazy. I mean, I know that's the way that is, but that's I know. Isn't that horrible? Yeah. So Booth goes back to this this gang of conspirators that were gonna help him kidnap the president. And he says, instead of doing that, let's do this other thing. He says, I'll kill Lincoln. Uh, Lewis Powell is sent to kill William um, H. Seward, who's the Secretary of State and a close friend of Lincoln's. And George Atzerodt is going to kill Andrew Johnson, the vice president. Wow. Yeah, take them all out. The whole line of succession there. That's the plan is like just to make the union government collapse, right? And they think, you know, if it collapses, the Civil War is almost over at this point, but maybe that would change, you know. Yeah, without their general, without the morale hit that they would take. Yeah, for sure. So the first guy we'll, we'll talk about is this guy Atzerodt, who's a German immigrant. And he, for the, the kidnapping conspiracy, was recruited because he knows, um, he knew all about like the waterways around Washington, D.C. Mm. So during the war, he like ferried spies and stuff. But now he's been assigned to kill Andrew Johnson, who just became vice president like a month ago in March. Wow. When he's inaugurated, he infamously gives this really drunken speech and he's like, ranting about his plebeian roots and how he like overcame all these elites and everything it's very similar language that we hear like now I, in I some was ways. gonna say that's a little uh uncanny yeah he's super drunk people are like pulling on his coattails trying to get him off the the stage he's he's just there but lincoln purportedly said afterward it has been a severe lesson for andy but i do not think he will do it again so lincoln's very forgiving about this though of course he didn't know he was gonna die in like a month and that johnson would become the president yeah. Was uh was Andrew Johnson famously not a good president? It sounds like it. He's famously considered like the one of the worst presidents in American history. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he's the first president to be impeached. Um he was a racist. He I mean a lot of it's it's like a what if of history and we can talk about it a bit more later, but it's like if Lincoln had lived, what would the post Civil War years look like? You know? Yeah. Was Johnson a he was a Democrat? Um, uh, he ran with a Lincoln on the National Union Party ticket. Hmm. But he's he's a good addition to the ticket because he's from the South. So it seems right. like that could be a good balancing act after the war. In any case, Johnson is staying at the Kirkwood Hotel, your Ford's Theater. And Atzerodt goes with a gun and a knife and he books a room at the Kirkwood. But then he goes to the bar around 10. And though he asks about Johnson, he just sits there and drinks. It's like looking for liquid courage. Yeah. Fair. I mean, fair enough. Yeah. But he just keeps drinking. He just doesn't stop. He never gets that liquid courage <laughs> you need to kill someone. Right. Yeah. Usually it's like a quick shot and then you're like, okay, now let's go. Right. Game time. But yeah, by the end of your like third old fashioned when you're like, I still can't do it. It's like, I just don't think you have it in you then. He And he doesn't. He spends the night wandering on Washington, D.C. and checks into a different hotel at 10 a.m. just like... <laughs> just does not do what he's supposed to do. And Johnson, meanwhile, is unguarded, you know, in his room by himself, so. Probably also drunk. Probably also drunk. Wow. He had the easiest job of all these guys. Yeah, and it didn't happen. Meanwhile, close by, this guy, Lewis Powell, goes to attack William H. Seward, the Secretary of State. I think one of the first books I read about the Lincoln presidency was Team of Rivals by mm -hmm. Doris Kearns Goodwin, and it's really good. She kind of lays out, you know, all of Lincoln's relationships with the people who became uh, members of his cabinet, including Seward. So Seward was kind of his foe at first, and then they became really close friends. But Seward had been like a terrible carriage accident, and he broke his jaw. So mm. he was bedridden and had this like metal contraption holding his jaw together. Oh, yeah. Um, he, could, he couldn't even speak. And like when Lincoln had visited him to talk about visiting uh, Richmond, which had just fallen, Seward couldn't, couldn't speak at all. Wow. So he's in kind of bad shape. And, you know, it seems like it would be a pretty easy target. Yeah, right. Bedridden, mm -hmm. like basically incapacitated. 
Can't even talk. Like, yeah. Yeah. So uh, around the same time that Astaroth is drinking at the bar, Powell goes to the door and knocks a little after 10 p.m. Uh, when a servant answers, he says that he has medicine for Seward, which seems a bit unbelievable because it's 10 p.m. and just they don't know who this guy is. Right. Uh, so then Powell forces his way inside and he is like determined to get this job done. Uh, as he's running up the stairs to where Seward is in bed, Seward's sons run out to see what's going on. Powell fires at one of them and misses and then clobbers him with his pistol. He then stabs the other son, oh then, then attacks Seward's bodyguard, his daughter, and his nurse, and then jumps into the secretary's bed and starts to stab him in the face and throat. Oh. Yeah. Seward is totally defenseless. He was just in this accident. But he's, he, his jaw is held by this metal contraption, and the knife is, like, hitting the contraption. So it's not... It, it hits Seward. He's, like, stabbed, but it's yeah. also bouncing off the uh, contraption. And that probably saves his life. Um, Powell is eventually pulled off the bed. And then as he's, like, slicing at them, he's, he's yelling, I'm mad, I'm mad. And then he runs out. And just for good measure, this poor State Department messenger shows up and Powell stabs him <laughs> and then runs out into the night. Oh, my God. It's, like, not funny, but it, it's just so, like... What a sequence of events. Yeah, for real. I, I, was he yelling, I'm mad, I'm mad to what? To make him self seem insane so they wouldn't pursue him maybe maybe or, or was he just like actually something uh, yeah who knows or maybe he's just actually like angry because he screwed the whole thing up maybe he runs out into the night and he's supposed to meet up with david harold who's another of the conspirators but harold got scared off by all the screams he heard within the house and he <laughs> he booked it <laughs> um so then powell gets lost and he probably spent the night sleeping in a cemetery so that's how he spent that night. Um, wow. And Seward survives. He lives for seven more years and famously buys Alaska, which is why it's called Seward's Folly. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So did anyone in that house die? No. Wow. Incredibly. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, They're all just kind of like stabbed. Stabbed, beaten. Yeah. But somehow, yeah, everyone lives. Um, at the same time, this is happening. Booth is making his way to Ford's Theater. So he goes up to the presidential box where Lincoln, his wife Mary, and this young couple named Cl uh, Clara Harris and Henry Rathbone are sitting. It's around 10.15 p.m. One really interesting thing is that it had been advertised that Grant would be there, but Grant's wife Julia hated Mary Lincoln. So when, when Grant was like, hey, do you want to go to the play with the Lincolns? She was like, no, I, like, I hate Mary. I don't want to go. That's and so Grant so made funny. an excuse. Yeah. Wow. Mary Lincoln was kind of a difficult person to... Uh, get along with i've heard yeah yeah so instead they have to you know, they want they have this box so they invite this couple instead worst night of their lives it's really sad because the lincoln's like they seemed like they were really happy in their final moments together um at one point lincoln takes mary's hand and mary says to him what will miss harris think of my hanging on to you so and lincoln's apparently his last words are she won't think anything of it and oh. the play starts yeah Booth knows the show, and so apparently he waits for a laugh line, and when the crowd starts laughing, that's when he shoots Lincoln. Mm. Uh, Mary starts to scream. Rathbone's a union officer. He leaps up and tries to grapple with Booth, and Booth stabs him, then jumps from the box down into the, the crowd below, and he yells, Six Semper Tyrannis, which means thus always to tyrants. Dramatic. I totally, I get why he waited for the laugh moment and the noise to cover up the sound of the bullet. I don't know if it was necessary. Because yeah, it doesn't really. One, it's still a bullet. It's still going to make a loud right. sound. And also just the commotion. I think he he wanted Lincoln to be like distracted, you know, mm -hmm. perhaps. I mean, who knows Maybe. what he was thinking. So Booth breaks his leg in the fall, but still manages to escape from the theater. And Lincoln is taken across the street where he is pronounced dead at around 7 a.m. the next morning. It's at this point that Edwin Stanton, who's the war secretary, says, now he belongs to the ages, which has also been, uh, or the angels, maybe, but the ages. Huh. Yeah. Seward, meanwhile, you know, is in pretty bad shape, but not dead. And so some some sources say that maybe his this news was kept from him. But Doris Kieran's, good, Doris Kieran's Goodwin, at least, says that he notices the flags being at half mass. And he knows that if Lincoln were alive, he would have come to see him. Mm. So he kind of puts two and two together and and knows that Lincoln's dead. Wow, yeah. But really, this story like continues past the assassination. 
the first thing they want to do is capture all these guys, you know. Right. And it becomes kind of clear, you know, it wasn't just Lincoln who was attacked. It was also Johnson and um, Seward. So they know that it was a bigger thing. George Atzerodt is arrested five days later in Maryland. He made a lot of mistakes. You know, he asked about Johnson. Um, He booked into a room under his own name which the police searched and found a loaded revolver, a knife, and a bank book belonging to Booth. So that was a pretty easy... Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like that's like the one thing you shouldn't do if you're planning a crime. Yeah. Use your I don't real think he was meant to... to be a criminal. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, he ended up not doing anything, so... Right, exactly. So he's he's arrested and convicted for conspiracy to commit murder. Lewis Powell is arrested... Uh, a couple of days later, when he turns up at this boarding house owned by Mary Surratt, which the, the conspirators had kind of mm. used to discuss the plot, she later becomes the first woman to ever be executed in American history. Yeah, I wrote something about her for the site. Oh, yeah? About yeah, her or just about her as like part of a larger... It was just about her and mm. her involvement in this conspiracy and uh, whether... And, uh, there were a lot of people very outraged about her being hanged with everybody yeah it was sort of like unclear historians still debate yeah her innocence or not right but she was executed as was powell he shows up with blood on his sleeves he's carrying a pickaxe again two and two together um yeah they figure he's involved john wilkes booth meanwhile is on the lam for 12 days and actually there's a tv show coming out soon uh called manhunt which is based on a book which is fantastic, the book. Interesting. About trying to track him down. And it's interesting because from what I remember in the book, Booth is reading newspapers from the North and the South, and, he, and he's expecting at least the Southern ones to, you know, see him as a hero, but they don't. Like, they think it's going to make things worse for them. Um, and he, he's just like, he's crushed by his coverage yeah. after the assassination. But anyway, after 12 days, he's cornered by Union soldiers in Port Royal, Virginia, and is shot and killed there. It takes him a long time to die. <laughs> wow. Too. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. 12. I mean, just 12 days on the run with a broken leg, even. Right. It's kind of crazy. I mean, it's not like people didn't know who he was. He was. Just, he's a famous actor. A f- yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it certainly seems like he got some help escaping and um, being on oh, the for land sure, for that yeah. long. But so he's he's killed there, and then his accomplice David Harold is is also hanged with the other conspirators. One of the like, kind of the most overlooked parts of the assassination, I think, are these people who are in the box with Lincoln and Mary Lincoln. They're super traumatized, especially Rathbone, because he felt like he should have done more to save yeah, the president. Because he was it was what a soldier a of some soldier, sort. Soldier, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'd imagine you'd be pretty torn up if you failed to stop the president from being assassinated. Right. Uh, so unsurprisingly, then, his mental health kind of just, like, plummets. Uh, he and and Clara eventually move to Germany, and then he just loses his mind, basically, one night in 1883, Christmas Eve, actually. Uh, he attacks his wife with a pistol and a dagger. He shoots her, stabs her in the chest, and then stabs himself five times in the chest. Whoa. He survives, she doesn't, and he spends the rest of his life in an in, insane asylum. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. I know. I like that. You just, it's the kind of thing I think would be very hard to ever get over that, that kind of guilt and trauma. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just like major PTSD. Yeah. Meanwhile, for the country, this is a pretty, some historians think this is like the biggest thing to ever happen in American history, the Civil War and the Lincoln assassination. I think, yeah, that, that's pretty fair. Because afterwards, Andrew Johnson becomes president. And so the question is, yeah, how would Lincoln have dealt with Reconstruction? Johnson is not open to black suffrage like Lincoln was. He was pretty racist. He said things like, uh, this is a country for white men. And by God, as long as I am president, it shall be a government for white men. So, Ugh. yeah. Um, Confederate leaders were pardoned instead of being put on trial. Because he was sympathetic to their cause. Mm-hmm. He was a Southerner, you know. and Well, yeah, yeah. Although he, you know, talked about his plebeian roots, he really wanted to be approved of by, the like, the ruling class. So he was happy to be kind of like one of the boys. And meanwhile, you know, he, he'd inherited Lincoln's cabinet and Congress and everything and ends up having a very combative relationship with them, which leads to his impeachment, which, like Clinton and Trump, he's not convicted, though he is impeached. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really astute observation about this possibly being the i never really thought about it much like other other than right now Mm -hmm. what happened after lincoln's assassination i always just kind of stopped the story there 
I was like, oh, oh. And then they killed him. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then life went on. But yeah, I, I forgot, like, forget how major that post uh, Civil War period really was. Super major. Yeah. Like other presidents who'd been assassinated, like McKinley and JFK, which were both like massive deals, obviously, the president being assassinated. But they didn't also have to restructure and rebuild the country. Right. Yeah. I mean, there you could argue like Theodore Roosevelt and LBJ changed American history yeah. um, when they became president. But yeah, this was like a very delicate moment in American history. And I mean, and it's possible that Lincoln would have not risen to the occasion. True. Um, right. But he died. So it's impossible to know. And Johnson, meanwhile, is yeah considered one of the worst, if not the worst president in American history for how he wow. dealt with it. Yeah, Johnson was a uh, Johnson thought he was Johnson saw himself as like the ultimate patriot, you know, and he was buried wrapped in an American flag and with the Constitution under his head. Like, like really. But uh, oh, my God. But he wow. was, uh, yeah, just pretty consistently voted by historians as being one of the, the worst ones. Yeah. Um, he didn't get reelected, did he? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, I th- just pulling up a list of worst presidents in u.s history just out of curiosity a lot of them are around the civil war years interestingly yeah that's that makes sense i'm curious if part of that is just because it's easy to be like oh well obviously this very racist president was one of the worst yeah well it's like how did people try to prevent the war most of them didn't really try that hard um and then yeah johnson could have done things like really differently yeah. Okay. And usnews.com. Um, number two, Andrew Johnson. And number one, James Buchanan. He was the guy before Lincoln. Mm. Well, yeah. that'll do it then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but Johnson was, yeah, not a not a good not a good president. And that, yeah, that's crazy. Bookending Lincoln between two very bad presidents. I know. I mean, Lincoln is a really fascinating like character and just seems like a really good person you know when you read about him and stuff yeah i don't think i've ever heard anything i've heard bad things about his wife but i don't think i've ever read or heard anything bad about lincoln i'll say two things one is like a lot of people did not like mary lincoln so when lincoln died like and the people who were writing about lincoln's life were people who loved lincoln and hated mary lincoln so they're all they're all like pretty biased i think that's fair but it did she did seem like a difficult person to uh, get along with the lincoln also did some questionable stuff like at one point he thought a solution to slavery would be to send all black americans to like africa send them back oh he was like this plan could work um which was insane because at that point like some people had lived in the united states for like longer than right right you know since the beginning right no one's perfect and that was well he never followed through with it no (laughs) it was just it was just in the the uh workshopping stages i think he might have talked about it with like Frederick Douglass, like brought up the idea or something, but. Yeah. I am aware, Mr. Trenchard, you are not used to the manners of good society, and that alone will excuse the impertinence of which you have been guilty. Don't know the manners of good society, eh? Well, I guess I know enough to turn you inside out, old gal. You sockdologizing old man trap. <laughs> I mean, I think what's interesting about the Lincoln assassination is is just that, well, kind of like what you said in in kind of the American consciousness, it's like, oh, this happened and he was killed. and But there was so much else going on, right. even that very night and then afterwards, obviously, as well. Yeah. And the way that that plot evolved to the fact that they were like, oh, let's kidnap them. And then one thing went wrong and they were mm-hmm. like, scrap that plan. Let's kill him. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think that attack on Seward was so vicious and also just what are the chances that he would have been in this carriage accident and that's you know right. saved his life do you know if he ever recovered from that fully if he like i, I mean presumably was able to talk again because you quoted him yeah i'm not really sure i mean he did die seven years later but i think yeah he was already he was kind probably, of older at that saying, point. He was probably getting up there at that point they didn't really live that long anyway back then yeah a pretty vicious attack so you said they called the attack, or the not the attack, the attack on Alaska, the purchase of Alaska. They called that Seward's folly. They did, yeah. Because there was like a bad idea to buy it. Well, they were like, it's not even connected to the United States. 
That's fair. But then I think yeah. they found gold or oil there, and then it was like, oh, okay, it's good. Right. Good job, Seward. Yeah. I guess, I mean, yeah, it is an interesting uh, bit of land. Yeah. Well, I guess Seward saw something there and decided to go for it. But yeah, Seward's folly. Whatever happened to Mary Todd Lincoln after all this? Well, she was around for a while. Um, they still had two living sons, one of whom died pretty young. So they, they had four sons and three of them died pretty young. Wow. And the final son, Robert Todd Lincoln, you know, had a normal life in some ways and abnormal in other ways. And I think he right. eventually put her in an insane asylum, I'm pretty sure. I mean, the that was just what you life. did with your women back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was she was a lot. She was a lot to handle. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what he did with her. Wow. That's yeah. harsh. He was also present at some other assassination. Oh, I think he was present with James Garfield's assassination, maybe. Yeah. He was about 40 feet away when James Garfield was shot in 1881. Wow. I know. Really uh, relive your trauma there. Jeez. Seriously. Wait. And then I want to see if he was also there around with uh, McKinley. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought you were going to say. Yeah. He was just outside the Temple of Music where McKinley was shot. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. These Lincolns are like assassin magnets. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're President McKinley about to go give a speech. They're like, oh, sir, we just want to let you know. President Lincoln's son is actually going to be in tennis tonight. It's like, call, call it off. <laughs> like, cancel the speech. This is not going to go well. <laughs> apparently, this is on Wikipedia, so we would have to double check this. But Lincoln apparently, Robert Todd Lincoln was apparently invited to a, some president invited him somewhere. And he said, no, I'm not going. And they better not ask me because there's a certain fatality about presidential functions when I am present. Wow. If he, that, well, I hope that's true. <laughs> <laughs> if that's true that he said that, because that's so funny. And we, I think we talked about this. We talked about this at some point, but like Robert Todd Lincoln was saved by Booth's brother, Edwin. Mm, Did we talked about right. that at one point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Maybe during the Lincoln and Washington podcast that we did. Yeah. He'd like fallen onto the train tracks and Edwin leapt down and pulled him up. And Edwin was a famous actor too. So, so, uh, right. Yeah. Robert Todd rec recognized him. Wow. Huh. Way to redeem your legacy, I guess. It was before the assassination, but ah, yeah, ooh. preemptive, <laughs> preemptive redemption. Dang. Way to have a, you say brother, his brother? His older brother, yeah. His older brother, yeah. Imagine being like, wow, I saved the president's son. People are going to remember the booths as heroes. <laughs> and his brother's like, yes, they are <laughs> for a different reason. It's, uh, it's Ed Edwin's story is kind of interesting because he was more famous than John Wilkes Booth and like probably the better actor and everything. But then after the assassination... Some newspapers were like, we can never let a booth act ever again on an American stage, you know, <laughs> oh, no. like um, oh. it just ruined his life. He's like, I didn't do it. And he did actually return to acting, but he took a long, okay. long oh, break from good. it. Good for him. There's a funny, I mean, a, uh, an interesting tradition people have of leaving pennies on John Wilkes Booth's grave uh, because no, it has Lincoln's, Lincoln's face. Funny. Yeah. yeah. I think Not we can funny laugh. to Booth, probably. I think we can but... laugh at the racist assassin. Yeah, that's in, fair. In his posthumous misfortune. Yeah. I'm going to check out that show, Manhunt. Although I was talking to someone, Patton Oswald is in it. And apparently, Interesting. they were like, there was some review where they were like, he's been so miscast in this show. But I thought, I thought the book was really interesting. Yeah, he's playing Lafayette Baker, who I am uh, not familiar with. Is Lafayette that a real C. Baker, an investigator person? and spy. Yeah. With the Pinkertons uh, again or just a random investigator? No, he's a Union soldier hmm. who was a spy in the South. I see. Interesting. Uh, Intel.gov refers to him as the scoundrel spy chief. Hmm. Mil military Images Digital said he had a controversial life. He was one of the guys who investigated the assassination. Who, like, tried to track down John Wilkes Booth and David Harold? Oh, interesting. Yeah, Patton Oswalt's a weird choice for that. For sure. Not, not really a dramatic actor, but maybe he's, like, a scoundrel investigator. They were like, yeah, he's, like, a... Some, uh... Yeah. I mean, sometimes those, uh... Sometimes comedic actors are better dramatic actors than you expect. You know what? Now that we're talking about it, I think I do remember seeing, like, brief previews for this show, but I had no idea what it was about. Other yeah. than it was called Manhunt. That's very interesting. Yeah, I think, it, I mean, the book I thought was really fantastic. Um, 
And it's an interesting story. It's like, how did he escape for 12 days? Yeah. And what was he doing? What was he doing? And why did they kill him? I mean, I think that's like another interesting part of the assassination as well. Yeah. Now, are there conspiracy theories about that? Because that'd Hell be yeah. <laughs> conspiracy on conspiracy. Well, there's like two. I think people are like, why did why was he killed and not put on trial? Mm-hmm. And then there's a theory that he was not killed at all, that he actually became like either a sideshow performer or like that his body was later in sideshows. Mm. There was a body that was displayed in these shows that I think they said was Booth. Interesting. Yeah. But they weren't supposed huh. to kill him. You know, they. Right. Yeah. And the guy who did it was a really strange character. Uh, Boston Corbett, I think. He like I think he thought that like God was talking to him or something. There's something oh. strange about his story, but he took the shot. It wasn't a good shot because it took Booth like hours to die. But right. You can always check out more stories on the site. All that's interesting.com. And of course, you can join our newsletter uh, for more, more content like that by going to all that's interesting.com slash sign up or becoming a member at all that's interesting.com slash membership. Yes. You can also write into this podcast at podcast at all that's interesting.com if you want to share uh, in written form any of your thoughts, uh, opinions, facts you know, things we got wrong conspiracy theories about john wilkes booth all of that can be sent in there or you can leave us a voicemail at 929-526-3029 and follow us on social media we are on uh instagram at history uncovered podcast on tiktok at real history uncovered and if you're listening to this podcast on youtube you've already found (laughs) us but we're also on youtube we're everywhere Till next time. Well, if I have to say so, this podcast has been one for the ages. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or the angels. Or the angels. We don't know. All right. Okay, let's let's leave it there then. Oh.